This is Keith from Cruacon, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Keith. Hey. Hey, Bruce. How are you, my friend? Not too bad. How's things? Yeah, not bad at all. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. I'm getting prepped for the uh, the cruise here at the end of the week. Yeah, I'm so fucking jealous. Jesus. <laughs> I kept checking. Oh, my God. Like, I know um, Andy and what's the other guy, and I sent them, like, a, like the, the last kind of fucking hustle in the story. I said, look, this is the last hustle. Yeah, I know we played last time. But if you want to have like a you know an, a, the house band, the Irish pub band, at the, <laughs> oh at yeah, the, on, that, like, on that light on that deck there. That, yeah, well, we we no, we played in the kind of the English pub uh, yeah. the last time, and it was felt like one of the top ten gigs of the whole fucking cruise. Like it was the whole promenade thing was rammed, and I just I thought that'd be a cool thing, like not have Cruacon play live, but have us as the house band every night. That'd we'll do great. the Irish pub. So that was my last hustle. <laughs> Still haven't heard anything. Still refreshing the emails, but you know, we'll do it next year. <laughs> it looks like they still have like uh, nine or ten bands to go yet, so maybe there's hope. Yeah, I mean, it's for us. It's probably just too short notice. Oh, yeah. I, co- I like couldn't a arrange week, it, right? Yeah, and they do that. I know when Arab Alter played the same year we played, the lads from Arab Alter got them the notification a week before sailing. Really? And they're yeah, and they're like, Keith, what do we do? Like, uh, what <laughs> do we need visas? Do and luckily I was there to actually help with these questions, just to help expedite their whole fucking thing. But they got there in the end and had a great time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's and especially after so many years, it's gonna be nice to yeah to chill with the metal family anyway. Oh man, it's just the best experience, isn't it? Seventy thousand tons. It yeah. really fucking is. I agree. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Let's talk about Kruacon. Let's do it. So the living and the dead is done and ready for release. Uh, how do you feel about it now? And are you satisfied with the outcome? Oh man, I'm so so happy. Like I couldn't have it. Couldn't have went any better. Like Kruacon is always just chaos and tumultuous things happening that a lot of the fans don't see in the background. And I'm always like so many balls in the air trying to make things happen. So, I mean, COVID, look, COVID came along and affected everybody, but it was also at the same time we went through big lineup changes and you name it. So to get the album where it is today, sounding as good as it sounds, as fresh, as strong, it's unique. Like it, it, it's not like any. I mean, every Cruacon album is always different to the one that came before. But this is just for me. I am so happy. Like I could not be happier. It, I've I've checked all the boxes I wanted to do. I've got the classical music stuff in there. Folk music is prevalent and, and as strong as ever. The metal stuff is there. Does the only thing I, I'm a bit not not weirded out by i remember listening to the album recently and just thinking jeez there's not many blast beats on this album <laughs> and, I'm, and like it wasn't like some some conscious decision like we're going to have a lot less extremity it's just the way it worked out right but apart from that i i love it i'm so proud of it i think it's our best album to date and i know everybody's that's such a cliche but <laughs> i firmly i really believe that heart and soul how much time do you spend thinking about and actually writing or not writing the previous record or, you know, does that make sense? Or being different from the last one while not, while still training, staying true to your brand. Oh, it's, it's a tough one. I always think about this. And for years, when a new album comes out, I always think, how can I possibly do better? How can I, how can I beat what I've just done? And I've taught that way back to the middle kingdom in 1999 folklore in 2000. I thought, man, I'll never be able to do better. So, when it comes to writing, I mean, there, there is no writing process. Somebody asked me recently, I've been doing a lot of uh, press for the new album. I can't remember who it was. And it's the usual question, like, what's the process? How does it start? And I said, like, there, there is no process. No, they said, when did you begin writing uh, The Living and the Dead? And I said, the actual real answer is I began writing that 31 years ago because there's a riff, the riff in The Crow, there's a trash metal riff in the middle of The Crow that I've had for 30 plus years thinking i must must get that onto an album into a new song and then i forget about it for like 15 years and then i remember it like oh yeah that cool it's not an amazing riff at all it's just like it's a 
it's a little trash metal riff and there we are it's on that new album 31 years in the making normally i just brain dump ideas onto my phone and just date them say when i had that idea i'll pick up a lot of stuff comes from a shitty acoustic guitar that i have i'll come up with melodies on that it's almost like a database then of riffs and melodies, ideas, brain dumps, basically. And then when I get into writing mode, I, I sometimes go through my phone and then I've got the laptop out, the keyboard, and I start exploring and, and working on it from then. 31 years. You imagine you still be doing this or making anything that was even, you know, relevant at this point? I mean, let's be honest, right? When 31 years ago, I was 15. No, it wasn't. Am I, am I being too genuine <laughs> there? I, I was a young teen. Right. Of course I did. Of course I was. I, I wrote two in the Gale when I was 15 years old. And at 15, of course I thought I'd be doing this. At 25, no, when I was in my mid 20s, when the band broke up for a year, I was like, nah, Jesus Christ, I need to get a job and, and take Because the band did officially split in 97, 1997. We broke up for a year uh, officially and then got back together. I really missed it. And. Yeah, no, it's mad, but you know, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. And even with the, the changes in lineup and just the, the the stuff that we went through years ago when record labels were falling apart, we we like we once recorded an album that cost twenty thousand euro. The record label went bankrupt. We couldn't pay the studio. Like it's a ridiculous sum when we look back. Then I had the record la the studio threatening to take me to court, and the same thing happened on the very next album. Uh, the, the very next album was Pagan and Hammerheart Records got it and said this sound quality is shit, we're not paying this it's it's it, it's not worth 20 grand or whatever it was, again threats from the studio to go to court like I've had such crazy experiences that a lot of people probably would have said oh, look, this is, you have a family, you have a mortgage you have a white collar tech job right. you know, fo focus on that man forget the band but I just love it too much I love I love everything about the band I love playing live writing music the buzz when you meet fans and like I'm just a regular down to earth person there's no damn or us that are on. it's just like a, a, per a regular person so when I see someone wearing my shirt or singing my songs at a gig I think it's a privilege and an honour I just love it it's amazing Plus, I imagine you've gotten the, I know I've talked to you about your tree in <clears throat> Russia at one time, but I imagine you've gotten to see yeah. like a lot of the world, you know, just playing music, which is really cool too, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah, we have had insane experiences. And that whole Russia <laughs> adventure that we lived. That years ago, yeah. But but not even that, that one um, thing that happened when our train was stolen by Russian bandits. That was one event on one of our trips. We were there 10 years in a row. No other Irish band, and I'm talking U2, fucking Tin Lizzy, no other Irish band did what we did, a regular touring band in Russia. And the stuff that we went through, the shit, like, brought to a communist commune and told we can't speak English here. Like, <laughs> what? It was just insane. And it's so sad to see what Russia has become. And look, I don't want to get into it too much, but and there's some great Russian people there, but... Like we we made a public statement that we'll stop shipping merchandise to Russia because of what they did yeah, to Ukraine. That, right. So we, we absolutely stand by Ukraine, and it, it's heartbreaking for us because of the history, respect, um, how well we were treated in Russia, and almost the fame that we had. Like I, I tell you, Bruce, we would have security guards with us. We were we had paparazzi. Really? Follow us around. I swear on my kids' That's lives, funny. we had like photographers. We once went to. This is like Michael Jackson level. We once went to a shop and they they put, moved everybody outside and pulled down the shutters so we could go and get some like sodas and beers in the shop. That's funny. And that's back when we weren't before we made the kind of the break that we 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 are now with the Blood Trilogy. This is before these albums. We were like fucking celebrities over there, completely <laughs> unknown. And all. it was it's just it's mad. We had some insane adventures there. So yeah, so this far along then 31 years, it's amazing. You probably got a book's worth of stuff to do if, if you ever decide to do that. Yeah, and that's that's what, like I remember 20 years ago saying, geez, I should write a book about what I've been through and you know, add the last 20 years on top of that. <laughs> even like things in um in South like you know, it's even hilarious stories. We we played Sao Paulo once and there was a big um meet a meet and greet was arranged, and I don't know what what the issue was. But when we when we went to the meet and greet, there was a hall 
our seats are there there's some nice velvet lines you know the the ropes for people mm -hmm. to queue beside one person showed up really the <laughs> one person so so don't take this the wrong way was it like spinal tap i was just i i remember just feeling so embarrassed i just couldn't make eye contact with people i was like please world just swallow me up right now this right. is so embarrassing like and if there was five people it would have been you know i, I could the, the fact that it was just one <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but then the dichotomy of like you just said you're a paparazzi following you in russia and then and that's really crazy stuff i thought that's it yeah you take the good with the bad uh but i mean that was a small little tour of south america which was amazing but the show in sao paulo was fantastic i mean they have uh, rabid fans down there right they're rabid metal fans yeah geez when we went to i, I tell you santiago in chile was out of this world now the, the show wasn't advertised great there wasn't a huge turnout for us but just walking along the streets and just every second person is wearing a metallica an iron maiden shirt it's like the the, the metalheads outnumber just the regular joes there it's fucking it's a crazy i've never been to south america but i've seen you know i've talked to people numerous times and they always say hey the the crowds turn out down there and yeah they're very yeah. supportive oh uh, yeah brazil and argentina was great but uh, now apparently just the promotion in chile was a disaster so it wasn't a very fun the, the gig was fantastic but it's just you travel all that way you want fucking thousands of people there so when that right. doesn't happen i'm going okay but no argentina brazil mm, perfect so let me ask you a question i'm totally off script here and out of my my question line but <laughs> when you're playing a show is it different for you or do you approach a show differently when it's wacken or vakken however you want to pronounce it as opposed to the five people we were just talking about or is a show a show you, you have to do you, you just you no for us personally no we, we we see no difference um and for me personally when i got on stage i'm probably focusing on the few hundred people in my line of sight like so we, we played hellfest and you you, you look up for those hundred people you just see it it's just gray you can't make out any faces so a few hundred people in a club show at Hellfest or whatever the fuck, it is the same performance. Now, we've had some crazy moments. Like, okay, now Santiago was fine. There was a few hundred people there. It was, it was okay. We've had shows on European tours, like in Italy, where there was 10 people. 10 people in a right. hall that could maybe hold a thousand. So does that make it, it difficult to go out? Or it does it? It, it fucking does. You feel, you feel, well, I feel stupid. I'm like... Like, how has this happened? No, every, every time there's a reason, the, the tickets didn't sell. It's a big festival. There's bigger bands than us, but they didn't draw the crowd. We're a smaller band. Not our fault. But it's still, it's fucking horrible. Just like, oh. And those 10 people have paid. They're like... Right. At the end of the day, that's their you know, money. They worked for that, right? Yeah. yeah. So you, you have to put on the show, man. You have to just fucking treat it as any gig. And sometimes like that, a band like us, when we have those moments, there's been, luckily, there's been very few of those happen. But when they do, you, you fucking embrace it. I was jumping down, just walking, you know, the wireless guitar says, I'm just like, hey, man, <laughs> right. how, how, how are you? Thanks for coming. Nice shirt. And they, they love it. Yeah, you have to just have have a laugh and really go with it. I mean, there, there would be a lot of bands that would probably just turn around and point blank say, I'm not playing. Or they just go through the motions on stage and stand there embarrassed. Fuck it. Just, you know. Well, have, yeah, like I was saying, those people paid their money, though. And, you know, it's not their fault that exactly. their friends didn't show up. So I guess they want the show. You got to give them yeah. the show yeah yeah 100 percent. and they're gonna buy merch or whatever so it's at least gas to the next venue well there you go <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe i don't know what gas costs over there but beer, beer money yeah. <laughs> yeah beer money um now that the uh the, the record's done are you gonna do the uh the new music business model of like a single every four to six weeks or you just a couple here and then the album that's exactly what we're doing so this is new to us despots records are fantastic like they're the the biggest pretty much rock indie label in sweden that they've got like swedish household names you know that are just fucking superstars and they have this great model of uh, exactly that promotion is is second second to none so i'm not saying anything bad about a previous label trollzorn but they were very focused just in central europe mainly germany austria everything else was you know the promotion was really up to us now we're back with the likes of the candlelight records the hammerheart records that we had in the past despots are very similar the way they work which is things like the, i've just interviews lined up that i haven't had that in a number of years it's me that had to go looking for interviews so that's exactly what they're doing um this is new to us 
making videos is is a big thing for us. We we did one, um, two maybe in our history. Now we're doing like three in the space of a few months, which is a nightmare. But yeah. it has to be done. It has to be done, especially in this culture. Yeah. Oh, it's it's just painful. Like it. it I, oh, like I'm not going to. Hey, videos are great when they're done. Like I'm really happy with the way the crow turned out. I think it's got a cool vibe. Oh, I hate it. Like I'm the producer. I have to get these people. I have to put the people in the room. Oh, you're I'm doing like, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I saw something online. You guys are doing. Is that training? And forgive me, I don't know the actual terminology, but is that training in sword fighting? Yes. Yeah, that's cool. So that's the video shoot we've got coming up this weekend again it's a big production we've got like the best reenactment guys in ireland and they're training us so when we do the sword fighting in the video it will look just a bit more authentic right absolutely because when we did the battle for the yellow ford on the last album that was a small production and it just doesn't look great (laughs) it's i hate that video it's so i'm like i can't have that happen again i don't want a stupid video so yeah, I mean, I'm producing because I'm here, right? The record label have, I don't know what you want, Keith. We couldn't do it. They're paying for it. They're, right. they're, they're bankrolling everything. But I'm here trying to find, like, the production crew, the video crew, the people to be in it. And then, you know, then I'm getting messages. Are on you Facebook. scouting locations and doing all that? No, the production crew are doing that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. But I am getting, like, messages about the, the, the Viking troop, like, oh, you know hot food for the day and, and i'm like oh yeah humans eat food and i have to make sure they eat that <laughs> so it's like fuck it's a nightmare but it'll, it will be worth it and it, it's exciting as well it's great to have that support from a record label that have that singles coming out there's artwork we've got beautiful artwork for every yeah. single that we do and look they were the guys that pushed us in 2020 they literally the head of despots Records sent me in in a Facebook message at the start of 2020 or the end of 29. 2020 is going to be Cruelcon's year. It's like, fuck, well, we've seen how that went, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> but they, in the middle, they, they're the ones that pushed us, said, look, we fucking recommend getting a single out. And I'm like, but we haven't recorded an album. You know, you record an album, release a single. So they're like, bullshit. Just go and as soon as the studio's open, get in, get it out there. I was a bit apprehensive, but in the end, it was it was such a great idea. We got the Hawthorne single out, the interest in Cruicon, boom, was back again. Um, and yeah, now one thing, that, that was two years ago. So when we went to record the new album, the Hawthorne just sounded different, right. different, different amps, different, different musicians. So right. we actually re-recorded the entire song. The only, the only original thing from the, the, the only remaining thing from the original is literally the tempo and the vocals everything else was re-recorded so it's you know the single will always be the single and it's great because Mero the old drummer he moved with his family to Sweden at the start of COVID that's why he left the band but it was his last performance with Cruicon and I remember thinking, I don't want I don't want to take away from that but I'm thinking well I'm not that will that single exists forever out right. there and now the album exactly. version yeah yeah and Tom our new drummer he really wanted to put his stamp on it as well so it's cool so yeah, it worked out. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I do appreciate that you're doing me an album because I think as an old school metalhead, I I like the full physical release album. What mm-hmm. is how much effort goes into sequencing, right? Because that's a whole artwork, a whole art in itself that I think is lost in the generation now, right? What do you mean by sequencing? Like the songs in in order. How are you going to put oh, those? Oh god, oh man, yeah. How they flow and the mood you create and that sort of thing. Yeah, it, it's so important, man. And like, I I thought about it, and there's a few songs that flow into each other. It's not necessarily a concept album that was like the previous one, but there's one song. I think it's called "The Ghost," and the next song is "The Crow," and the the last lyric of "The Ghost" is "On the shortest branch, I see a crow," and then the crow starts, "Oh, the crow to sit on the shortest branch." You know, there's a little bit of linkage like that, um, and I just put them the way I wanted to. And then we came to the vinyl production. And it's a it's a it's a fucking big production. Like it's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful vinyl. So it's two discs, it's four sides, and then I I could have hit a major problem. They're like, okay, Keith, what way was, is this going to work on vinyl? It's like, oh fuck. And just coincidentally it worked out three, 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 three. You know, the 12 songs fit three songs on each side. I can't believe my luck. Because on side 
A has the Queen, the longest song on the album. It's about seven minutes. But the the instrumental, the very first track, is like two minutes. So, so it it's just work. I, I can't believe my luck that it actually worked out because it is, as I say, sequence that they do tell a bit of a story. Um, and the flow, you'll hear the flow when yeah. you hear the actual album. And that's important, through. right? Because that's something I think that's missing in in today's generation when you mm-hmm. get one single and you don't really get the flow or the feel or the vibe yeah. of the record. And just just remember when I say this, right? When you do listen to it from start to finish, just the first track is The Living, and you'll hear why. You're going to go on the journey. It's about 55 minutes. Then you get to The Dead. And I think when you hear The Dead, I hate that, The Dead, it's very hard to pronounce. When you get to The Dead, it just makes sense. So just remember, it is what it is. You'll hear it, and you'll be like, oh, okay, I, I get it. Nice. But I'm not going to say anymore. Just, just, yeah. just listen now for that. The last track on the album is there for a reason. Okay, and and, so, it, ha- and, and it has certain emotions. For yeah, that's a what reason. I was. That's that was my point exactly. Then the whole putting them in a in a way in an order that does that. Yeah, that's missing in a lot of the generation. You know, my son's age, they just want to download a song and move on. Exactly. And yeah, I think sure. in a lot of the artistry, artistry. Sorry, man. I went for a jog this morning and I. I listen to Spotify all the time, but I don't pay for it. I, I'd rather have the, the, the real thing. So I stuck on an album and it's just randomly playing shit out. Of, and I can hear the feedback of whatever Slayer. I just listen to Slayer Hell Awaits and it's the feedback run. No, it was Rain and Blood. Of course, the classic the <laughs> feedback was running in and then it's cut into something from fucking like 2010. It's like, right. Oh. And like, for, as you said, for this generation, that's normal. The, yeah. Hell, man. Yeah, my son doesn't get it. I've tried to teach him a hundred times, you know, sit and appreciate it the way it was put together. But yeah, give me the one song and let me move on. Oh, man. Yeah, Jesus. Youth of today. So what's going on with CrewCon? You guys taking it on the road? Is that yeah, well, that's the plan. We're, we're, we've been struggling to get uh, festivals because I'm still finding throughout 2022, a lot of festivals are just finally having their first um, edition since COVID. And I've been speaking to them and they're like, well, the lineup we've carried over, cancelled. Car- it's the lineup from two years ago. Yeah, it's happening in 2022, but the lineup has been full for two fucking years. Right. So we're 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 really struggling. We've got some really nice festivals and we're we're discussing a few bits. We've got Carnunas Pagan Fest next month, Hate Hate Vikings in the UK. We'll probably do a few small. We we've got the Siege of Limerick in Ireland, which is a big Irish festival. We'll have an Irish day. We'll have a few club shows around Europe that we need to plan. Um, but there's no big, big festival as as yet for this year, which is kind of frustrating because we've been on the festival circuit for nearly 10 years. Yeah. So we need to get that sorted. I know I said that was my last question, but you just kind of mentioned that you guys just finished up at hell, Heaven and Hell, right? Or Hell and Yes, hell. hell and Heaven. What was that like? Oh, man. <laughs> so have you heard any of the, the kind of the bad stories from there? No. Oh man, you should check Blabbermouth. It's like, it's it's very interesting. Um, a lot of bands had a lot of bad experiences. All I can talk about is our experience, and we we had a fucking great time. And um, it, it, it's no the, the organization left. The, oh, I don't like. I don't want to say I'm bad. The guys we work with, beautiful. We were put up in a four star hotel. We had our own rooms. Our fee got it before we left Ireland flights everything was paid for it it's really hard to criticize they did have some issues with transportation uh, and organizational stuff and that's what you'll see on blabbermouth now there was a few bands just for whatever reason things just went to shit for them and you'll see their facebook rants how they were fucked over this this oh my god it's unreal we we struggled with uh just a shuttle bus to get us to and from the hotel right just, the, the night we arrived just we went to check out some bands uh, no, the night we played, yeah, we we seen those issues with the shuttle bus, so we arranged it much better than any other band. We got our bus, we went back. The thing, the, the one organizational thing we seen was the shuttle bus to take us to the airport didn't show up. But because I heard third hand, this, this shit's going down. I, I, I'm a, I work in business continuity, resiliency. That's what I do for a living. Mm-hmm. So straight away, I booked two taxis that morning to come at the kind of the last possible moment. If the bus doesn't turn up, our bus didn't show. The taxis did. We went to the airport, you know. So you just got along. Yeah, yeah. Like, Jesus Christ, things go wrong. And I think that's one of the biggest, most impressive festival lineups i've ever seen in my life i don't think i'll ever see a better looking uh, festival lineup right. crew were part of it 
when you put on that kind of show, there will be fucking things that go wrong. Take it upon yourself. Don't be the band that just sits back fucking with grapes being fed, waiting on your manager or somebody to do fucking everything for you. Show a bit of interest. Check if things are going right. If things are going wrong, do something about it yourself. Don't expect somebody else that you've never met in your life to actually give a shit about you. And I don't, again, no disrespect to hell and heaven, but that's just the nature of humanity. Like, take care of yourself because things go fucking wrong, man. Yeah, things happen. And contingency plans are the way. Yeah, it helps to be a fucking you know, <laughs> operational resiliency guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all I had, Keith. Did I miss anything you want to talk about? I know you guys got a bunch of merch and pre-orders. We can head over to uh, it's Despot Records, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're doing a cool um, bunch of merch and, and different packages. One cool thing, uh, Despot's bought the rights to our back catalog with Hammerheart Records. The, the the classic Cruelcon albums. So I own the rights to Two in the Gale. I made my own vinyl release of that and it sold 500. Once that's gone, it's gone. I'm very proud that, that that's out there. Despots have bought the Middle Kingdom, Folklore and the Pagan albums. So they're going to get a big, big uh, CD re-release, vinyl release for the first time, t-shirts, merch, you name it. So that's all coming down the road. Uh, and I cannot wait because people have been screaming at me at concerts and emails and, and Facebook messages like, I, I want a physical copy of these albums, like especially the one with Shane McGowan. Shane McGowan is such an Irish legend. People want the folklore album that he sang two songs on. You you physically can't buy it unless you go to eBay or Discogs and pay ridiculous prices. So right. they are coming. They'll be on the Despots Records website, along with the beautiful artwork on that new album. We have T-shirts, backpatches, all the beautiful merch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so things are looking up for Kurokan in 2023. That's good. I'm I'm glad for you, man. Yeah. Cheers, Bruce. Thanks so much. Hey, man. I'll have a beer for you in the Irish pub on the uh, on the main promenade. Oh no! Oh, fuck, <laughs> I, ho- I hope hope you fucking choke on it, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Be well, my friend. Cheers, mate. Talk I'll soon. talk to you soon. Right now. Bye bye. bye.